हाई डेफ कॉन थैंक यू आई एम निखिल मित्तल आई एम फ्रॉम इंडिया एंड आई विल बी टॉकिंग अबाउट पावर पिट ऑफ पोस्ट एक्सप्लोटेशन लाइक अ बॉस सो हाउ मेनी ऑफ यू आर पेनिट्रेशन टेस्टर्स यू शोली ड्यू पोस्ट एक्सप्लोटेशन येस और नो या सो we'll have a look at something which could be used to enhance your post exploitation experience uh, it sounds like a vendor term but yes and uh, let's have fun so something about me hello oh. yeah uh, i'm a hacker who go by the handle samrat ashok this is my twitter handle and you can find my blog posts on on my blog i'm creator of cotilia and nishang cotilia is a toolkit which could be used to uh use human interface devices like tnc uh, and others uh, in a penetration test or for fun of or for whatever way you want to to be nishang is a post exploitation framework in uh, powershell powerbitter is going to be a part of this framework you can find both of these uh, on google code links are on my blog i am interested in offensive information security methodology to upon systems getting into systems uh i'm a freelance penetration tester just read it twice and i've spoken at couple of conferences before this uh, and this is my first time at defcon thank you so uh what we'd be looking at is uh, what is the need for post exploitation what is powershell in a couple of slides uh, why do we need powershell then we'll have a look at uh, power printer its architecture usage payloads and much more details then uh, there is a web shell which is written in which i call c sharp dot net and powershell and the limitations and conclusions so what is post exploitation for me it is the most important part of a penetration test as a as a freelance penetration tester i know that someone who is going to pay me doesn't understand what a shell is what i got access to your dc yeah that's okay even i have access to my dc so th that's kind of response you get in a, in, a, in a meeting with the client with those guys who who ought to pay you so so we we need some ways to show actual data or things like if if it's a pharma company the complaints their their customers have made against them against them or if if it's a supply chain management company then the profit they take at every uh, every step of the supply chain things like that so this differentiates a good penetration tester with something which i've written etc so what is powershell it's a shell and a scripting language uh which is present i think post vista it is present by default on all windows systems it is an automation framework designed to help uh, system admins and of course penetration testers who know how to use it to their profit it is based on dotnet framework and is tightly integrated with windows yes it's by default on windows <laughs> so uh, why powershell anybody here uses powershell for their penetration testing things wow nice uh, any one of you use nishang by any chance wow oh. oh. <laughs> Uh, uh just just out of curiosity anybody here uses cotilia or knows what is it already okay thank you so uh yes why powershell it's easy to learn and powerful uh the help system is quite good you can uh read help about uh every commandlet or commands or whatever it, uh, it is in it 
We are not going into details of that. And uh, one thing which I have come through during my penetration tests is that it is uh, trusted by system administrators, countermeasures, etc. No one actually cares about PowerShell. There are a lot more things to have a look at. You can consider it bash of Windows. Uh, many things like uh, commands like ls, cat, etc. the very common ones are used as aliases in PowerShell. So you would be comfortable using it. And this means less dependence on uh, any library which converts your code to executable, let's say Python to exe or things like that. And somewhat, uh, to some level, uh, less dependence on MSF2. Now, MSF is very good. I mean, PowerPoint is nowhere near Metropeter from where it borrows its name. But uh, AV vendors are all around uh, MSF. So it's, it's good if, if sometimes you, you have something in your tool chest other than MSF which can help you in achieving things in a similar way. Power Peter. Yeah, it's a post exploitation tool written in PowerShell. It's a module. Uh, how many PowerShell programmers or guys you use PowerShell other than penetration testing for anything? Same guys. Okay. Yeah. Okay, it's a, it's a module or a script. It depends on the usage. So uh, how PowerPeter is designed is if you rename a file to PS1, which is the default uh, extension for PowerShell uh, scripts, it could be used as a uh, PowerShell script. And if you uh, rename it as PSM1, then it's a PowerShell module. Payloads and features are uh, all divided into different functions. Each function represents a different functionality. So uh, if you have uh, some, some code which you want to include with PowerPeter so that its helper functionalities could be used, for example, persistence, pivoting, etc., then you can just write a new function, copy it into your PowerShell module, and you're good to go. So uh, how to use PowerShell? So since we are talking about post-exploitation, we'll uh, assume that we have uh, access to a machine, uh, rather we have administrative access to a machine, and we'll try to make our way to other machines on the network, uh, backdoor that machine, or pull data out of that machine more effectively, th that could be done using non-PowerShell methods, or at least most in, in a more stealthy way. And yes, uh, the th third thing, it could also be used with a Metropeter shell. Uh, you can use, uh, and, and uh, one thing, if you're using it from Metropeter shell, you won't be able to get an interactive uh, PowerShell prompt from, uh, from Metropeter. It's the way PowerShell handles uh, output redirection. And uh, other than from uh, Metropeter, if you have any custom shell code which gives you ability to execute code on a machine, you can always use Power, PowerShell and hence PowerPeter. So there are many payloads in PowerPeter. We'd uh, have a look at it. That would be the most lengthy part of this talk. Most of the time we'll be uh, in the demonstrations. So uh, these are the capabilities of PowerPeter. Uh, persistence, using WMI permanent event consumers, uh, will reside into the machine. It won't be start a script or something like that, uh, service failure, or uh, schedule task, it won't be anything of these. It would be, uh, WM, we'll use WMI permanent event consumers, that's it, that's it, I can explain it right now. We'll have a look at it. Pivoting, we'll use built-in uh, PowerShell remoting to pivot to other machines. There, there are two ways possible, either we'll just run commands non-interactively, or we'll uh, interactively run commands or, or scripts or whatever on a remote machine. Uh, we have a simple function called enable duplicate token written by a friend Nicholas, which allows, uh, which is nothing great, but if you are admin on machine, you can get system level access and 
do stuff like uh, jumping hashes or LSS secrets, etc. Then there are helper functionalities, simple ones like converting exe uh, executables to uh, uh, Unicode uh, encoded texts or Base64 encoding or exfiltration, etc. So these are some help, uh, helper functionalities. Deployment. Uh, we can deploy PowerShell from a PowerShell session, from PowerShell remoting session. Uh, we can use Metropeta. What else we can use? Yep. We can use PSExec, obviously, because that allows us to execute commands on a remote machine. Uh, And of course, we need a volunteer from the audience, first time DEF CON person. Your hand shot up. <laughs> yeah, 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 everybody else is like, damn it. To our new speaker and our new attendee. <laughs> Busy afternoon, we gotta go. <laughs> and no following us, we know you're out there. <laughs> Okay, so. <laughs> Power Beta could be deployed using drive by downloads. We'll use a HTML application which will execute a VB code, which in turn would download uh, Power Beta from, from a server and execute it. And we can also use human interface device because I love to insert uh, HID thing into everything. So select some couple of functionalities and uh, run it from your HID device. From your HID, sorry. So let's get down with demos. So let's assume do you want me to assume that uh, I have clear text passwords of the remote machine or uh, do I have the hashes of the remote machine? Okay. Okay, so uh, this is an attacker machine and we'll use WCE to pass the hashes. So let me boot the target first. What, the font size? Yes. Yeah. Better? Okay, meanwhile it is booting, so what we'll do, we'll uh, use these hashes with WCE and on our victim, we will have administrative access. So yeah, because it's a post exploitation thing, please don't shoot me. So uh, we'll have a remote session, which is uh, PowerShell remoting a built-in feature of PowerShell, which is uh, enabled by default uh, post server 2012. So we'll have a remoting session on the victim machine. There uh, we'll download the, uh, the PowerPitter module, import it and we'll have fun. Okay, so we have uh, hashes with us. Uh, 
out. So uh, let's okay. Uh, this enter PS session uh, commandlet opens uh, PS session with this remote computer name, which is called Akela, which means standalone. It's not part of any domain. Let me try with credentials then. Maybe I have older hashes with me. I think uh, that was an issue with the, because my attacker machine had PowerShell version 3 and the victim is PowerShell version 2. So maybe because of that, otherwise I just tested it before the talk. Okay, so the roles are reversed. So my VM machine is now attacker. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So let's, Okay, I am now if I import the module because sorry. Yep. Okay, so uh, the module is already there. Either we can download it using this one liner, which is this. But I'm not going to do that because I've already wasted a couple of minutes. So uh, I've renamed it to update.psm1 uh, just uh, because I was testing some uh, things. So let's import this. So now we have some 
functions imported into uh, this, this current PowerShell session. For example, uh, let's see, won't be beautiful, but let's see uh, what is uh, some, some juicy or basic information about the client. Okay. Isn't looking beautiful, but as you can see, we have <laughs> we have logged in uh, profiles of logged in users, PowerShell environment, pretty trusted hosts, pretty saved sessions, recently used commands. Are there any shares on the machine? No. Environment variables. Some details about the current user. No SNMP installed applications, installed applications for current user, domain name, no, it's a standalone system, contents of ETC host, running services, local users, local groups, WLAN info, That's, this is the thing which messed it all, okay, etc. So uh, this gives a basic, us a basic idea about uh, the target system. Now, uh, Let's have a look at uh, uh, the basic things like get WN keys. So uh, one thing I would like you to note is, for example, when I say get WN, this is a, in, an independent script. This is not because of power it's, it's residing in that system. Better I get out of this folder. Okay. So uh, this get WLAN keys uh, function shows us the keys in plain text of all the uh, Wi-Fi uh, WLAN system, WLAN profiles residing on that system or which it has connected to in past. No, oh, that's, that's my home Wi-Fi. <laughs> Okay, just to make things faster, I made a list of what I want to demonstrate. Okay, WLAN keys and clear done. Key logger I'm not showing, it takes time. Okay. We already ha had hashes, we assumed that we had hashes. But suppose uh, you got access to this system from a remote shell, you don't have access to uh, the password hashes. Then, then let's use this. Will you get hashes? No, we won't because we need system privileges to execute this thing. So for that we have a helper function called enable duplicate token. This duplicates system token from LSS uh, uh, service and assigns it to the current uh, uh, partial thread. So we run both of these in tandem and here we do have the Hashes of the system. Okay, but these are hashes. What if we want LSS secrets from the machine? Let's try it out. Okay, but this is a 64 bit system, a new victim. So for that I need to execute, okay. Is it the correct path? Wow, 64 it's Okay. Thank you.
Okay, this is the 32-bit partial because LSS secrets are stored in the 32-bit registry. And here we have to We'll import power printer uh, in this 32 bit uh, PowerShell, call enable duplicate and call get LSA so that uh, that works. Let's see. Thank you. Okay, so we will input it. Okay, so we have the LSS secrets of this machine. As you can see, this is again my uh, password. <laughs> okay. okay, now uh, let me try again to get back to the older victim because for a couple of these things. I have a MS SQL server running on the older victim or uh, rather let's let's use it on the same machine. So now uh, we are just for the sake of demonstration we are running it on on the same machine. But uh, I swear it works on the remote machines too. Okay, let's try uh, this Invoke uh, invoke Medusa. It's uh, basic brute forcer. Let's do it on ourselves. Okay, it, that it's bound to be successful because we are running in the same machine. We we'll leave it for now. Let's. Execute some MS SQL commands on this machine with the username this and password this. Okay, so it asks whether you need, you want to run a PowerShell shell or a skill shell or a command shell. Let's select PowerShell. So uh, now we have a PowerShell uh, shell on this machine. So let's check what's the version. So it's version 2 and we can do much stuff. There are already uh, many built in commandlets in PowerShell which could be very useful in a penetration test. For example, get process, etc. etc. Okay, we do have a basic port scanner too, but let's, let's leave it. 
आपकी वी डू हैव एग्जीक्यूट शेल कोड बट लेट्स लेट्स लीव इट टू बिकॉज आई वॉन्ट टू शो यू वन मोर थिंग विच वॉज नॉट प्रेजेंट इन दिस लाइट इन ऑन द डी वी डी दिस वाई लेट्स लेट्स हैव अ लुक एट पे वो थिंग Where will we pivot to? Okay. Meanwhile, it's it's getting up. Let's have a look at a video. I'm on a remote machine. Uh, zoom out, zoom out. As you can see, I'm on a remote machine. Then how do we pause it? Okay. I think I'll open it in VLC. Oh, it's not playing it. Okay, I'll try to. Okay, so we are on a remote machine, and uh, yeah, just import it, uh, import the module, and this is a backdoor called uh, wait for command, uh, which which waits, uh, which uh, pulls a uh, URL for commands, and only when. Good. Those who can't see, I'm sorry. So we have the uh, check URL as this paste bin, and as the payload URL, we'll uh, use uh, this paste bin URL. You can use any service, any any website, any web app you want. Okay, we have the check URL, the payload URL, the magic string. Uh, the magic string, the payload will uh, check if 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 uh, if the magic string provided to the payload matches this one. only then the payload will execute we say start 1 2 3 and the stop string is stop when uh, whenever stop comes in place of the start 1 2 3 the uh, backdoor will stop sorry okay we just downloaded uh, uh, power operator and got hashes of the system as you can see the uh, the payload was this the payload of this and now we change the payload to to uh, maybe get process and meanwhile in the background the the back door it's it's waiting for either the stop string or next command till the time stop is not found on the check url it will keep looking for new commands or new payloads on the payload url part and the time it it takes 1 minute that is 60 it takes 60 seconds to execute commands uh in between so that it it doesn't create too much noise or too much traffic to get caught easily so after waiting for 1 minute let's bring okay so i'm running out of time so yeah it will show the process and then i'll change it to stop and it will stop
let's let's leave the pivot thing for the while I'll blog about it. Okay, let's see the what's the IP of this victim? Okay, assume you have a file upload or somehow you can upload files to a uh, ASP.NET machine or server. So you can use this, this may come handy. So what is it 146? first the slides because I have made the slides so I have to go through them. Okay, it is named after the god of death Yamraj. How many of you know Yamraj here? Yeah? I see a couple of Indian faces so you guys might know it. Yeah. <laughs> so it is god of death, sounds badass. So it's written in C sharp .net, as I said that is what I call it. The UI is designed to be uh, to, to look like a, a actual PowerShell uh, shell or PowerShell prompt. You have the ability to download and upload files. Uh, you can execute scripts using uh, the encode and execute button and if the remoting is enabled you can also uh, uh, run commands on remote machines using this web shell. So uh, before the demo, uh, meet Yamraj. Who was this? <laughs> Wife of Yamraj. Okay, so uh, is it visible? Better now. Let's have a quick look at it. If you type help. It will show you how you can execute commands, etc., on this, uh, on the, on the victim using this. And the best thing in this is encode and execute this option. You can actually uh, copy a fairly large PowerShell script in, in, in this command console, and when you click it, it uses uh, compressed PostScript by Carlos Perez, uh, thanks to him. So, uh, it compresses the script and uses PowerShell encoded command to execute it on the victim. Uh, we won't have a look at it, it will take time, let's see that whether we are really able to do something. Yes, some basic commands. Yes, users. What else? Any any command you want me to run here? Let's say stop computer, etc. Anything. And one thing is, uh, if you want to uh, download or upload any file, the help clearly says you have to physically type here. For example, if you want to upload a file to the current directory, you have to put the full name here. let's say one dot, no that's it, browse for it, sorry, <coughs> browse for it, select it and upload it. That's, that's a little bit inconvenient but it's for the purpose of maintaining the feel of uh, a proper uh, PowerShell prompt. Okay, limitations. Yet to undercore community testing, I've been using this for past six months. Uh, many of the payloads are already part of Nishan. So uh, some of them have go undergone some testing, others have not. So bugs will keep coming I think uh, tool improves with time. And, and one uh, aspect is Keylogger does not work from the uh, PowerShell remoting session. I don't know why. It's maybe because of the uh, run, uh, run space uh, restrictions with the PowerShell remoting session. Uh, I am uh, unaware of any uh, keylogger in PowerShell which runs from a 
PowerShell remoting session. And yes, backdoors can be detected with careful traffic uh, analysis because it's a fixed time interval in which, in which it pulls the source. Pivot depends upon partial remoting. Okay, to, to conclude with, PowerShell gives you much control over a Windows machine or a Windows network. And PowerPrinter utilizes this thing uh, in an attempt to easy this most important phase of a penetration test. Obviously, there are other ways to do the same thing. PowerShell just makes it or tries to make it easier. I would like to thank, give shout and give credit to all these guys who are friends and fellow PowerShell hackers. So uh, I would request uh, applause for these guys. And I would like to thank my friend Arthur who helped me getting here. And there's another interesting PowerShell talk tomorrow by Joe. Please make sure you attend it. Thank you. Any questions, insults, feedbacks? You're welcome. Thank you.